Americans who are supposed to be so hateful. It's not how America is. But there is an alternative point of view. And there is an alternative point of view for, to the metropolitan, sophisticated, you know, as, 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 you know, as I can say, as a Jew, the metropolitan, sophisticated, often Jewish-oriented, intelligent, literary point of view, which, uh, uh, you know, with its standard, you know, liberal uh, points, points of view. There is an alternative to that. There's an alternative to that, which is that of the homesteader, that of the family, that of the not wishing to get involved in the rest of the world, not really wanting to understand it, that of not wanting the, the, the scummy tide of crime and drugs to, to roll over them. And the interpretation of the scummy tide of, of drugs and crime being that of too much liberality, too much openness, not enough discipline, not enough family. Now... We can argue this. We can say, no, I don't believe that's where the drugs and the crime come from. But we've got to be, as liberals, if that's what we are, we've got to be grown up enough not to insult people who have another point of view with a cheap, easy, they're just right-wing, redneck idiots. Because they're not. One of the... <laughs> Some of you. <laughs> One of the things that's most impressive about America is the... Uh, social and even financial engagement with their own small local communities. Yes. The, 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 the level yeah. of giving yeah. in, in terms of almost tithing yes. is incredibly impressive and that's particularly prevalent in these more rural, as you say, homestead It is, yes, the culture of endowment you might yeah. call it, which, which uh, uh, at the local level and of course famously at the metropolitan level, the enormous endowments to the Metropolitan Museum of Art or the Opera or, various, or the Whitney or whichever art gallery it might be, but also you're right, in the small levels of endowment. Now, that, I mean, that is both admirable and to us perhaps bad. I mean, I remember having a, a really strong argument, uh, uh, and this is a warning for anybody in America. Uh, we live in a country where we have an adversarial court system and an adversarial parliamentary system and we are you know brought up as it were I nearly said from our nanny's knees and I realized that was a bit <laughs> old-fashioned <laughs> um, we are brought up unless you mean nanny mean grandmother of course which is, yeah. we say well shut up Stephen don't dig if you're in a hole um, we are brought up is all I meant to say <laughs> <laughs> in an adversarial tradition in which at a dinner party or around a table or in a pub we can say no that's <laughs> this is the case now aside from the fact that the word <laughs> means nothing to an American substitute with rubbish or balls if you said that to an American they would feel personally affronted in a very deep way and I've known a lot of British people who have become persona non grata at dinner parties because they've debated in a fierce way uh, and offended deeply you know, they go, how dare you talk to me like that? And I remember one of the ways I almost got in this situation was on this very subject you've asked me about, where, they, you know, they said, but the reason we have such generosity is because we don't have, like you do in Europe, this socialised... When they say socialised in, in, in America, they mean socialist. And, and, uh, so you have socialised arts. In other words, the government gives some money towards the arts. Or we have a, you know, the BBC, or we have a, you know, subsidy in theatre and in galleries, and we have uh, obviously a National Health Service and, uh, and so on. And, and I remember saying, which I thought was a reasonable point d'appui for an argument, if nothing else, I said, well, isn't it odd? You've got a socialised army. <laughs> that if you have an enemy, you decide that the taxpayer should club together to form an army to defeat the enemy and to defend your nation against that enemy. What is so different about forming an army to defend your nation against ignorance and calling it socialised education or having an army to fight against disease and having socialised medicine? Is that, why is one perfectly acceptable? Why don't you have a privatised army? Well, they almost did under Bush. But, um, and they kind of go, oh, that's just typical socialism. I said, well, no. <laughs> I, I, it, you know. And I started to get quite angry about it. And, and, and there had to be a lot of backing down. That, it, it's so, that is one of the most deep schisms you'll find. Even liberal Americans often, they'll, they'll say, oh, gosh, you're so lucky to have a, you know, have a national theater. But if you said to them, well, why, okay, why don't you have a federal grant? They say, oh, no, that's not a good idea. That's socialism. I, I, you know, socialism is it's an, it's an nomenclature. Why isn't a, a, an army socialism? You know? If you can have an army to fight an enemy, then let that enemy be called disease and ignorance and so on. That's the beverage report, essentially, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> Sorry. See, I'm doing it again. I'm going to do a hot under the column, becoming embarrassing. Um, no, you're so it's not. It's time to open it up um, to the it floor. It is, indeed. Stephen, thank you very much for that. Gentleman over there. Um, there's, a, there's a lady down here who will oh, yeah, get we to got first. Two. Oh, right. You Ooh. said that um, you talked about the Americans not being unsophisticated and, and that that shouldn't be judged. Yet, um, isn't sort of ignorance dangerous? I ignorance is always dangerous, but I, I don't necessarily think that we in Britain have any um, <laughs> particular right to cast that stone. Um, with the beam in our own eye seems to be... I mean, if you, if you were to look, for example, uh, throughout the 80s, the, the most successful television show in America, the, the consistent number one TV show in America was Frasier, which was a show about elitism, in which they were have a whole episode in which the, the, the thing that drove the plot was whether or not you know, Niles would, would get that bottle of Margot, 1982, that he had bid for. Well, there's no British show that's ever had that level of sophistication. Or look at the West Wing. Look, I mean, look at, look at American TV, you know, with the exception of the things we've given them, like bloody this idol or that talent. Um, <laughs> then, you know, where the hell do we get off? You know, if you throw a stone in, in a market town in England, and ask that the person that that stone hits on the head, you know, where Heligoland is, or where, which, where, which island of Indonesia I'm pointing at, or where, what the capital of, you know, uh, uh, of Peru is, and I don't think you get a better answer in Britain than you do in America. I, 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 I you know, I, I just, this, it, it's just typical of us British. The one thing we seem to think we have left is the ability to sneer at Americans. Now, all that reveals is our own insecurity. Do you think Americans spend 0.0001% of their time worrying about us? All that reveals is our sense of inadequacy, is our sense that, oh, so, all right, okay, you've got more this, more that, more the other, you're more successful at this, you're more successful at that, you've got a more interesting that, and more people want to live in your country than in our country, but we're, we know lots more than you do. Well, it's just not true. I just don't accept it, to be honest. And, um, I mean, I, yes, of course you can stop people in the street in America, and you can go on YouTube and find examples of it, where people are pointing at maps and saying, which continent is this? And the Americans going, ah, uh, Denmark. And um, we all get a good laugh and feel better about ourselves. But um, it's only, yeah, anyway. it only when the, the person in question is the president. Yeah. That is very <laughs> that, uh, That's a very good point. <laughs> um, a question over here. <laughs> um, I just have a question um, about Obama. Obama was really popular in America mostly because his rhetoric and his message was able to go across party lines. Um, but do you think that abroad, if he had been the same guy with the same rhetoric, would his message have not have been as well received had his politics been different? If Obama had been a Republican, do you think uh, interna international perception would have been different? That's a very good question. I mean, I think there was unquestionably an appetite in, in the rest of the world, in Europe certainly, for a Democrat. I mean, what do we, as, as they would say in America, what do we know from Democrat and Republic? We don't, I, the, 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 the dispensation or whatever has, has changed enormously in America. It used to be, as, as, as you will well know, that the South was democratic. It was called the Democratic South. It was the heartland of the, of the democratic vote, the, the, the blue vote on the map. That has changed enormously. And now it's uh, states like your splendid Wisconsin, which is lovely, except when I was there, it was always minus 30, so it was like quite tricky <laughs> uh, to see a lot of it. But um, so we don't...